I don't know how to start this video. I am like a mess. <laughs> Hello, hi, happy Pride Month. I was trying to figure out what do I want to do for my first Pride Month here on BookTube. And I noticed that a lot of other BookTubers have been making really awesome videos where they say, these are the 15 Pride Month books that you should read and you should go watch those videos because they have great recommendations and they're very well done. One of the first videos I made on this channel was a list of books that I recommended to a bunch of fictional characters in one of my favorite podcasts that will be linked down below. I want to make this video because if I am going to do a Harry Potter dedicated video on my channel, I want to do it responsibly. And I think going out of my way to make specific queer, specifically trans and non-binary Rex to the characters that J.K. Rowling created that's a pretty good use of my time, if I do say so myself. All of that to say, I'm a giant troll. I'm making this video specifically to be annoying to JK Rowling and her turf followers. That's basically it. So if you would like to hear some really great recommendations by queer authors that feature queer characters, and also be on the troll bandwagon with me, stick around because this is going to be a good time. The first character that I want to make a recommendation to I don't think is a surprise to anyone. I'm going to make two recommendations for Harry James Potter, the boy who lived, the chosen one, the youngest seeker to ever get on the Gryffindor Quidditch team in a while i don't remember the first recommendation i want to make for harry is peter darling by austin chant austin chant is a trans author this is a peter pan retelling and the hook of do you see what i did there <laughs> the reason i wanted to recommend peter darling for harry is because i think out of everyone in the series harry would understand what it feels like to be a boy who feels misunderstood, who doesn't fit in with his family, and to go to a magical world that he gets to escape to, which is exactly what Peter does in this book. The writing in this book is magnificent. It's incredible. Austin Chant is an incredible writer. Their writing is so evocative. The characters that they write are so relatable and human and very charming and likable as well, especially James Hook in particular. He's a very charming fellow in this retelling. And I read this book in one sitting. I read it in one day. I couldn't put it down. I'm not a big fan of Peter Pan, if I'm gonna be honest. I don't. It's not a foundational text for me as a reader, but I love this retelling. My second recommendation for Harry is Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. I think it's kind of obvious what themes I went with when I was recommending books for Harry. This is another really great example of children going on magical adventures and not feeling like they belong in their family of origin. This book is also, like Peter Darling, incredibly written. Seanan McGuire is an incredible author. She is also queer. She is specifically pan slash bi and demisexual. She also has one of my favorite trans characters in any book I've ever read. Uh, I cannot remember his name, but he is the son of the woman who runs the school for wayward children. He is incredibly kind and creative and talented and brave. When I was making this list, it was really important for me to recommend 
books about really incredible trans characters for Harry Potter. I think it's kind of self-explanatory, but just to be completely blunt, Harry is J.K. Rowling's golden boy. I wanted to make sure that I gave her golden boy some stories about really incredible trans characters because, again, this entire video is a giant troll on J.K. Rowling. There you go. I also want to highly recommend listening to the Wayward Children series on audiobook. Sean and McGuire narrates this book in particular. I think she also narrates all of the other ones. I can't remember, but I thoroughly enjoyed listening to the audiobook on this. So really quick, Peter Darling by Austin Chant and Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. These are my recommendations for Harry Potter. My second character that I wanna make a recommendation for is Hermione Granger. I have two more recs for her. The first one is Wake, The Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolt by Dr. Rebecca Hall and Hugo Martinez. Dr. Rebecca Hall is queer. I don't know if she's a lesbian or she's pan or bi, but she is married to a woman, so there you go. <laughs> I know that recommending a graphic novel for Hermione is like, why would you do that? But Hermione in the main series in particular is very interested in abolition, specifically for the house elves. So I think she would really appreciate this story because not only is this a story about people taking back their agency and their power and fighting against their oppressors, but it's also specifically women who are being highlighted. The art is very interesting. It's very vivid. It's very evocative. This book is is definitely a graphic history about the topic that Dr. Rebecca Hall covers, but it's also a memoir about her story, trying to find information so that she can write this book in the first place. My other recommendation for Hermione is Amazon's Activists and Abolitionists by Mika Kendall and D. Amicos. D. Amicos is queer, their pronouns are they and them. The premise of this book is there are a group of women in the future who are taking a women's history course and they're able to be not literally but metaphorically teleported back in time to learn about women's suffrage and the fight for, for women's rights in all areas economically, socially, civilly, and they learn a lot about themselves. They learn a lot about the women who have come before them. I know that this seems odd to recommend these types of books for Hermione because out of everyone on this list, she's arguably the most well-read and obviously would really appreciate some more dense material. But I just think that out of all of the people on this list, Hermione would ab objectively appreciate what is going on in these books, the, the things that the authors are trying to say. She would get so much out of it. I'm recommending Wake and Amazon's Abolitionists and Activists for Hermione Granger. The third character that I wanna make some recommendations for is obviously Ronald Weasley. I started with the Golden Trio. I don't think it's a shock to anyone. I want to recommend for Ron Beneath the Moon by Yoshi Yoshitani. This is a collection of myths, folk tales, fairy tales from all around the world. I think, first of all, Ron would be really interested in reading this because these are stories that he's never read before. They're all muggle stories. He has no reference for them at all. So I think first of all, he would be very interested to read it because of that. And we also know from the seventh book that 
Ron loved being read Tales of Beetle the Bard as a young boy. So we already know that he enjoys these mythic folk tales. It's what his mom read to him over and over and over again. He loves hearing these stories. And I also know that Ron is not the most studious of the trio. <laughs> so I think he would, you know, be totally fine with reading one page and then like seeing the accompanying illustration that comes with all of the stories that are in here. I think this would be very accessible for Ron. The second recommendation I want to make for Ron is The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nagi Vo. This is also very short. This is a novella. I think this is 100 pages. It might be less than 100 pages in length. It's very short. It's very well written. It's very engaging. And the author is queer. I also super recommend the sequel of this book. I am so hyped for the third one. These novellas are about a non-binary monk who goes with their talking crane, I believe it's a crane, if I'm remembering correctly, and go to a bunch of different locations to basically accumulate stories. They're a part of a religious order where, the, like, the point of the religious order is to preserve as much history as humanly possible. Gonna definitely recommend The Empress of Salt and Fortune and Beneath the Moon for Ronald Weasley. Again, these I think these would be complete bangers for him for all the reasons I said before. The fourth HP character that I want to make some recommendations for is Professor Headmaster Albus Dumbledore. I couldn't pass him up in this list because he's, I believe, the only confirmed queer character that we have in the canon. Um, and also, like, the man makes the story happen. The first book that I want to make a recommendation for Dumbledore is They Called Us Enemy by George Takei. Again, I know it's weird <laughs> that I'm recommending graphic memoirs uh, for some of the most erudite of all of the characters because Albus Dumbledore, whatever you say about him, is incredibly intelligent. And he would crush a giant book that I would recommend for him. I think it would be very important for Albus to read a book about a gay man who goes through some really traumatic things. And the reason I specifically want to recommend a book about the Japanese concentration camps is because he was unironically getting really, um, you know, friendly with some Nazi-ish things that his uh, boyfriend was trying to, you know, get him to go on the bandwagon with. I know as a as an older man, he doesn't subscribe to any of these ideologies, but I just think it would be really helpful for him to read the firsthand experience of a person who was subjugated because of characteristics that they had literally no power to control or change. The second book I want to recommend for Albus Dumbledore is The Black Tides of Heaven by Neon Yang. This book is written by a non-binary queer person. This book is about two twins and they grow up in a society where gender is not something that is forced upon you at birth. So for the first like 18 years of your life, you don't have a gender, you are um, androgynous, you do not identify with any uh, gender presentation, you are referred to with they them pronouns, and it is only when you become an adult you decide what your gender expression is. I think out of all of the characters, Albus would really get on board with what Neon Yang 
is doing here. Like what they're trying to talk about, the ideas they're trying to explore as an author, the story that they're trying to tell. I genuinely think that Albus would really appreciate what is going on here. So I really want to recommend The Black Tides of Heaven and They Called Us Enemy for Albus Dumbledore. The fifth character I want to make some recommendations for is Severus Snape. The Half-Blood Prince, my man, love Severus Snape. Is he messy? Yes. Did I write fan fiction about my OC falling in love with him? Yes, I did. The first rec I want to make for Severus is Kiss Number no. 8 by Colleen A.F. Venable and Ellen T. Crenshaw. Even if these women aren't queer, it honestly doesn't matter because this book has such incredible queer representation in it. So this book is about a young lady who is trying to figure out why she just can't find someone that she wants to kiss who she is attracted to. She's really trying to figure out her own sexuality, but she's doing it in an environment that is not uh, open for her to do that. And then she finds out some stuff about her family that causes her to go on her own journey and figure out who she is as her own person. And I want to make, <laughs> this is kind of a silly recommendation, but hear me out. I want to recommend The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. Now listen, I think out of everyone on this list, Severus needs to read a, a sex book. And this is a book about a red-headed woman who falls in love with a monster. I just think, I need to say more. Oh, the dragon man also has two dicks. So, you know, I think there's a lot that he'll get out <laughs> of the book. I just had to. This is a great read, by the way. I know I'm... I gave this five stars and I'm very excited for the second one in this series. It's about a Kraken. I'm so excited. And then, oh, and also Katie Robert is bisexual like me. So, haha, -ha, yes. I just feel like Severus is a lot of tension that he needs to get out. You know what I'm saying? I think this book might help him with that. I don't know. I'm gonna recommend The Dragon's Bride <laughs> and kiss number eight for Severus Snape. I get a lot of bisexual energy off of Luna Lovegood. Does anyone else feel that way? I don't know. Maybe I'm just seeing things that I wanna see because Luna is a weird Ravenclaw like me. Oh, by the way, I, wrote, ah, this is, I wanna recommend A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone for Luna Lovegood because I think out of all of the characters on this list, Luna, would be down for reading a book about a bunch of messy bisexuals. Am I wrong? Tell me in the comments, but I really get a feel off of her as a person that she would be very interested in reading a book about a group of friends who have a quasi orgy at the end of the book. I just, I have a feeling in my heart <laughs> that this is real. So seriously, this book is incredibly well-written. The characters are super compelling. I'm very excited to read the second one. I just need to get my grubby little hands on it. Sarah Simone is bisexual, so she's definitely queer. And she writes some delicious queer stories, specifically this one. Um, very steamy, very compelling. The writing is so good. It's very, it's like, what is it like? I don't know. I want the best for my girl Luna, my fellow Ravenclaw. I wanna recommend her just like an incredibly well-written, steamy, hot, awesome book that she can enjoy. For my second recommendation for Luna Lovegood, I think out of all of the people on this list, she would appreciate 
the zine because that's all the quibbler is, right? It's just a zine. And she would specifically really appreciate queer zines that are created off of Etsy, which is exactly what this is. This is the queer language of flowers. I will uh, link this in the description box specifically. This is written by L.M. Zoller and Robin Ellen, Elaine, don't know. The authors, if I remember correctly, are trans or non-binary, and they're also queer. They're in a relationship together. I think this is a banging wreck for Luna. She would gobble this up. She would love it. Um, this is incredibly well-written, incredibly informative. I learned so much about queer history just by reading this tiny little zine. You can tell that the authors put a lot of effort into not only the research that's behind this scene, but also just like figuring out how they wanted to flesh out the different meanings of the different flowers related to their own personal lives and their own personal queer journey. I think Luna would love this. Tell me I'm wrong, tell me. I'm recommending The Queer Language of Flowers and A Lesson in Thorns for Miss Luna Lovegood. The next character that I wanna make some recs for is Remus Lupin. I love him. He's one of my favorite characters. Uh, Prisoner of Azkaban is one of my favorite Harry Potter books, and that's where he makes his debut. I wanna recommend uh, The Magic Fish by Trung Lee Nguyen. Uh, this is by a non-binary character, and it's about a gay boy who is trying to, you know, navigate his coming of age as a as a gay boy but he's also trying to relate to his immigrant mother and the way that they relate to each other is through stories remus is definitely one of the more serious characters in the series and i just genuinely think that he would appreciate what is going on here what the author's trying to say the dual story that's being told through the young boy but also his mom i just i think serious not serious remus i think remus would get a lot out of this book i think he would enjoy it i also want to recommend jimmy's blues and other poems by james baldwin okay so this is one of the greatest poem collections i've ever read James Baldwin is one of my favorite queer authors of all time. And I really think that, again, Remus is very serious. No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> Remus is very uh, mature. Okay. And I, again, going back to the magic fish thing, I think he would really get a lot out of that because he's a very mature guy. But he also would get a lot out of this. The socioeconomic stuff that James Baldwin writes about in his writing, I think Remus would be open to hearing about that and I think he would get a lot out of it as well. For my favorite professor of Defense Against the Dark Arts, I gotta recommend Jimmy's Blues and Other Poems by James Baldwin and The Magic Fish as well. For my last character, from the original seven books, I wanna make some recommendations for Moaning Myrtle because I think if anyone needs a good book, it's, it's Myrtle, for sure. The first thing I wanna recommend for Myrtle is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This is an incredible book. I read this in one sitting. Man, I've read a lot of these books in one sitting. Dean Atta talks a lot in this book about feeling like you belong somewhere, but you don't fully belong somewhere. And Moaning Myrtle really struggled with that in her life, but it's also something she struggles with as a ghost too, right? Because the, the bathroom where she lives in, it's her home, but it's also not her home. Dean Atta is gay, um, he's queer. Myrtle would read this book and she would like see that it's really well written that it has a lot of heart that the writing's really excellent but she would also really relate to the main character and the second recommendation that i want to make for myrtle is 
Taproot by Kesey Young. Kesey Young is non-binary. They are a queer author. And this book is just right up Myrtle's alley because it's literally about a boy who falls in love with a ghost. It's right up Myrtle's alley. Like it is literally about a boy who falls in love with a ghost and the ghost in him have a happily ever after. It is something aspirational for Myrtle. I know that she really, uh, you know, has a crush on Harry at one point. So I think this would be something that she would be really interested in reading. The illustrations are really beautiful. The, the story's really fun and it's very quick, but it's also very, you know, deeply emotional. There's a lot going on with this story. I would highly recommend it. And again, I just think because she's literally a ghost, M Myrtle would love this. So I'm gonna recommend Taproot and The Black Flamingo for Myrtle. I have two more characters that I wanna make recommendations for. The first character is my favorite character from Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Not my favorite Harry Potter book. Gonna be really real with you. I had a lot of issues with the play as a lot of Harry Potter fans did, but I objectively loved Scorpius Malfoy. He is one of my favorite Harry Potter characters of all time. I need more of him. The first recommendation I wanna make for Scorpius is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman because he and Albus should have been Nick and Charlie. Ugh. I'm so angry. Heartstopper, if you don't know if you've been living under a rock, is a graphic novel about two queer boys who fall in love. Alice Oseman is asexual. Uh, she's queer as well. And I just can't begin to explain how much I love this series. It is so incredibly well written. The uh, artwork is beautiful. And this is just right up Scorpius's alley. And I, and I honestly also want to recommend this to him so that he can uh, do what he should have done and fall in love with Albus. The other recommendation I wanna make for Scorpius is Camp by Lev A.C. Rosen. Lev Rosen is a gay man. This book is about a gay summer camp and it's specifically about a main character who uh, is more flamboyant in his presentation as a gay boy, but he fell in love hard for the like typical alpha male gay boy at camp. And so he has decided that he is going to be more masculine in his presentation so that he can win over said alpha male gay boy. So I want to recommend Camp and also Heartstopper for Scorpius Malfoy so that he can uh, embrace his little gay heart just like I have. And last but certainly not least, I want to talk about my favorite character from the Fantastic Beasts movies. I could have easily chosen Mr. Newt's Commander because he's delightful in these movies. But I had to go with my heart and I had to go with Mr. Jacob Kowalski. He is just, I love him so much. I think he's honestly my favorite Harry Potter character ever. He's so charming, he's so funny, he's so relatable because he is us, yes? He is every American kid who read Harry Potter and so desperately wanted to become a witcher or a wizard and go to Hogwarts. Like, that's who Jacob Kowalski is. For Jacob, my beautiful, beautiful Jacob, I want to recommend The Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill. Kay O'Neill is also non-binary, is a queer person. And uh, this book series is, j j I see Jacob just inhaling this series. Jacob really, for me, just exemplifies like Huga. The world around me is a scary, chaotic, turbulent place, but I am going to create my own little safe harbor of 
of pastries and cakes and tea and coffee and hospitality. Like that's who Jacob is. And I really feel like this series is, that's what this series is. It's about these fantastical characters. Most of them are queer and they're just like living their lives and like loving each other. And now that Jacob knows that magical creatures are a thing, I think he would read a book about little dragons as pets and just be like, mm, I know what that is. <laughs> I think he would really appreciate it on that level as well. Finally, my last recommendation for Jacob Kowalski, my last recommendation for this video is Check Please by Ngozi Yukazu. As far as I know, this the author, the creator of this work is not gay, but the main character is very gay and falls in love with another gay man. Just tell me if this would not be great for Jacob. It is about a young man who does like very masculine things like play hockey, uh, but also is basically the mom for his fraternity and just spends all of his time baking things. I could not pass up on this recommendation for Jacob because as a man who loves to take care of others and bake things, oh man, like he would love this. He would love this so much. And it's also a graphic novel. It's very accessible for him. So is the Tea Dragon Society. I just, I genuinely think that Jacob would eat this up. Like this is, this is him. Like he is the main character of this of this book is Jacob. It just the only difference is that the main character is gay and Jacob is not, as far as we know. Mm -hmm. So I really want to recommend uh, Check Please, Volume One, and the Tea Dragon Society for Jacob Kowalski. I think they would be perfect for him. I just oh, I just love Jacob so much. I want him to read these books and be happy. Yes, you're welcome. Please subscribe. Please check out some of my other videos. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and have a great day. Bye.